So for my presentation, I'm going to focus on navigating identity and rights, um, both within study abroad and my own personal experience of being a black woman abroad, um, but also when it comes to talking about human rights. Um, so a little bit about myself. I was born and raised in Ames, Iowa, just smack in the middle right here. And when I was growing up in Canada, I was like really like a National Geographic nerd. Like I love the Discovery Channel. I watched a lot of travel shows, like a lot of Amazing Race, and so you have like images like this in your mind. And when I was trying to figure out where I want to go to school, um, I was like, oh, I'm gonna go so far. I'm gonna really get out of here. I, was, I got all the books from the library, like the 500 best colleges ever. And I finally decided I ended up in Minnesota. So, <laughs> which is closer to a different country, I guess, if you think about it. Uh, but that's kind of my uh, decision process. So when it came to study abroad, I had a lot of different things going on in my head. Um, I'd taken French in high school and in college, so when I went to study abroad council, like, oh, here's some French-speaking countries where they're there. <laughs> and I, then I took a year of Spanish before, um, and that really made it worse. <laughs> and here's a list of Spanish-speaking countries. But I didn't know what country or what experience I wanted to have. Um, there's other like decisions like your academic discipline. So I was international studies, style, and part of the major is that you have to study abroad. So I could tell my parents, you know, hey dad, I want to study abroad. He's like, uh, yeah, you should be going to school. You should be, you know, graduating, focusing on that, focusing on your homework. I was like, I have to though. It's part of my homework. <laughs> <laughs> um, and another thing that I was deciding, I was like, what location, but also the culture and society. Um, and here is where you go and you start Googling things. If you start renting books in the library. Um, and this really kind of plays into what kind of experience you want to have, uh, what society you'll be comfortable in, what kind of culture you'll be comfortable in, um, and it really plays into identity. Um, when I was looking at study abroad programs, one thing that did come up was, you know, race, you know, ethnicity. Uh, where would I feel comfortable being black? And a lot of my friends who are people of color, they went to Brazil, you know, places where they feel comfortable, you know, or, or Europe, where there is a lot of multiculturalism. And then, of course, the last thing, Cost. I'm one of those people that if there's not a sale sign outside the store and I decide to walk in, I head straight to the back trying to find a clearance section. And if it's not there, I just walk out. <laughs> um, so my decision for the program, it took me a while. I deferred a semester, I was supposed to go spring of 2013. Um, I decided on Chile or maybe DIS and then I just had like a change of heart. I saw this program, um, the IHP program, which is another one here. Um, which would take me to three different countries, so Nepal, Jordan, and Chile. And I was like, oh man, it sounds awesome. The countries, you know. <laughs> There's a restaurant where I came, it's called Kathmandu. It's spelled a little differently, but you know, the language difference. But um, I didn't actually know it was capital of Nepal until I actually like, started looking it up, <laughs> I'll be honest. <laughs> um, and it was nice because I had like, three different countries, three different cultures to learn about, um, but also studying human rights would be an interesting way to kind of live in these countries. Um, and when I told my mom, like, she was really excited. She'd never, like, really traveled herself. And she's like, oh, yeah, you're getting the most bang for your buck. <laughs> it's like an economic decision. And, you know, I kind of felt like I got the showcase. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> uh, that's the last Price of Right reference for this presentation. <laughs> but, of course, uh, once I decided the program, I had all these expectations. Um, I got the Lonely Planet guide for each country. Uh, it was just terrible, like, <laughs> you kind of realize things that you never thought you'd be doing in a country, like, oh, I'm going to do that, like, oh, I'm going to hike in Nepal. This is a picture of me. We weren't even done yet. <laughs> That's not even halfway. Um, and just the wealth of difference between these expressions. Um, <laughs> That's my professor, you know, she's awesome. But um, that's actually a hill in Nepal, and I was struggling. It was like a stair stepper, like, you really had to be good. And of course, I saw pictures of Petra before, but I didn't realize, like, I thought Petra was like a roadside attraction. Like, you just drive up in your tour bus, get out, and you just see this, wow, it's so looking great. It's a hike. It really is. Like, you're nodding your head. Like, that's my friend Gina. She was, I mean, that's after you see Petra, you can keep going, and it's hands on the knees, really. Um, so we had an orientation in New York City, which was great, and we kind of got um, exposed to different human rights issues in the U.S., which I thought was a really great part of the first time, my favorite um, portion of the program. Uh, we talked about housing rights, immigration rights, uh, workers' rights, and we got to be different groups that were active in the city. So we met a group of um, undocumented students who were um, fighting for the DREAM Act, but also restaurant workers, um, and a trip to the Bronx Housing Courts to talk about housing rights. Um, and this really takes on a lot of you know, cultural identities when it comes to these conversations, because 
the people that it affects, you know, they are minorities or they are, you know, marginalized communities. And so this is a really big part of the program. Um, and while you're away, I thought that this kind of discussion, talking about cultural identity, was what was missing from the program. Um, what you realize when you talk to these organizations is that their identity is kind of the basis of their advocacy or their struggle for human rights. And I thought this kind of reflected both, you know, the demographics of my program, where it was like very few people of color were actually studying abroad. Um, so when it came to like talking about identity, this is kind of overlooked because if it's a very homogenous group that you're kind of teaching to or is kind of experiencing these issues, then you won't really, like issues of race and class and, you know, these issues of identity really won't really come up. Um, uh, so <laughs> you're probably wondering why all of these pictures are side by side. <laughs> um, so my experience, in, uh, experience traveling abroad is I got called all of these things pretty much. <laughs> I was called Michelle Obama, Brown Sugar, uh, Donna Summer, which is random. <laughs> uh, uh, Black Beauty. Well, I don't. Know, I hope they weren't talking about the horse. But, <laughs> but <laughs> it kind of goes to show that um, like people of color studying abroad is kind of a rare phenomenon. And you know, when I went to each of these countries, there are people of color in these countries, but the situation that they're in is where they're kind of invisible. So if we're in Chile and we're talking about migrant workers, well, Afro Peruvians in Chile that are working there, you. you like I'd see some of them, but you know, it really wasn't the focus of our, you know, kind of our instruction. I thought that was like a really key aspect of getting into human rights. Um, and there's, of course, kind of my own personal experience. Uh, there are just times when you just have to let it go <laughs> when you're encountering these people, and it's like people want to come and take a picture with you. It's like, well, how do you react? Especially if they're little kids. You can't tell them like, get out of here. You know, scram. It's really. Um, you can feel uncomfortable, and, and I wouldn't discourage study abroad, but I'd actually really encourage it because it's good to feel uncomfortable. It's good to have these experiences. Um, it tells you a lot about yourself, but it also helps you kind of know more about your own identity and how it relates abroad. And um, so, of course, it's kind of like a study abroad, like process reentry and rights. Um, a big part of our program was how we were going to take the knowledge that we learned and bring it back home. Um, and I thought the two weeks in New York really played into that is where we saw a lot of these issues that go on in the United States, but we kind of, when we go out into the world and think about human rights, it's always something that goes from like the West to developing countries or to the global South, and we don't really consider that the same issues that are going on in these other countries exist at home. And so definitely bringing it back home and connecting communities locally and globally, I thought that was like a great aspect of this program is that, especially if there's more diversity in study abroad, then you have, you can make these more connections, you can make these relationships with people who have similar struggles. Um, and then making study abroad more accessible to populations as well. Um, a lot of the different factors that went into me studying abroad are things that happen to a lot of people and can kind of discourage you from studying abroad. So how can we overcome those barriers?